Welcome to the Prodigal and the Priest podcast, a podcast about faith, sports, and two friends from different cultures. Here are your hosts, Joey Scansella and Father Paul Bechter. Hello, Prodigal and the Priest and me. Howdy, howdy, howdy. No, it's not. It's the question edition. That oh. was a test you lost. Okay. You lost. You failed. <laughs> <laughs> you lost the test. You know how my... I'll give you another one. Okay, so I got to tell you something. Before we get into these questions, and I probably should save it for the regular because some people only listen to that or some people only listen to the questions. Really? Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. I went to my son's Porque soccer no los game dos. last night. <laughs> okay, yes. Which I didn't know soccer until... Like, I, did, I just... I never really watched it. I never yeah. knew the rules, learned about it, the any beautiful of that. Game. And... Uh, is a fun game um which just side note i think anybody who's bored at baseball would also be bored with soccer i think <laughs> i that was going to say that very in last, similar okay. in our last question edition <laughs> but <clears throat> my wife played soccer all her life and very good she played all four years at franciscan starting goalie you know all of that anyway she so a goalie. yeah goalie so keeper I'm learning that I'm a bad parent. (laughs) (laughs) I could have told you that. (laughs) Because (laughs) I I became one of those parents. I entered a new realm last night. I grew up watching parents yell at their kids from the sideline. And not like yell like there was the mean parent who's like, why didn't you do what? Like, I'm not talking about that. Right. But just like your kid is the kid who like, doesn't focus. Come on, little Johnny, get in it. Come on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like realizing that I was like, I'm going to take matters into my own hands because the coach obviously is not yelling loud enough <laughs> right. at my son that I'm going to be like, Dominic, get the ball. <laughs> like <laughs> ru- you're on offense. Like you're a forward. Go up, Dominic. Look up. Like, I, I became that guy last That's night. That's amazing. Now, part of it is because he has some focus issues. Mm-hmm. The other part of it is because the drive in competition and anxiety in me, yeah, it, it's strong with me. <laughs> yes. Like, very much like the force that of strong force, with Luke. That force is very strong. It is me. very strong within me. And my son, at one point, was spinning in circles. When the ball was like on the other end of the field and literally I could see him singing to himself. Mm -hmm. And I heard my wife say, Dom, we're playing the game of soccer right now. We're playing an actual game. And I just, oh my goodness. I just, that was fitting. Accidental drop. Accidental uh, drop, but fitting. The losing horn. Kind of. Anyway. So my question is, I have a question for the question edition. Okay. Okay. I mean, submit it through the proper channels yeah, like everyone exactly. else. My question is, how do I fix this, everyone? And also, mm. my actually, my question for you, though, if you would have gotten married, had kids. Yeah. You think, like, last night showed me for Dominic, my oldest son, I could never coach him. Mm-hmm. I, I would just, I think I would become that yeah. very, I don't want to say abusive in any way, but... I would not like the person I become as his coach. Now, Fran is a little different, like that she's like a little bit more driven. She competitive Mm -hmm. where I'm like, I could probably coach Fran. Mm -hmm. Would you coach any of your kids? So my dad coached us uh, in baseball in particular Mm. uh, in our America's game. America's game. So in Bermuda, we (laughs) we had British sports in school. And then we had these like youth leagues uh, for American sports uh, outside of school. And so I loved playing baseball growing up. And uh, my dad would always be like umpire or coach or just do whatever they needed to keep that sort of uh, American youth league thing going because it didn't have the support of any other institution in Bermuda. It was just volunteers. And I always resented the way he coached us but 
I think I see a lot of wisdom in it now. Mm. Um, when you say us, like your team or just you? Me and my brothers. Yeah. yeah we're yeah, close yeah. enough in age that we were on the same team. And, right. And playing and Bermuda in the, in the only same had level. like 20 people. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, he was always like harder on us than on the others, but in kind of an indirect way. Mm-hmm. We're like, we're like if he was umpiring or something or Right, which is a huge conflict of interest, but, <laughs> um, but <laughs> like the strike zone was smaller for us, right, at right. bat than it was for the others, and I don't think he was trying to do that, but it's right. just and you mean larger. Well, it was easier to get a strike against you, right? Yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> smaller would mean it was harder for the. I pitcher. was a pitcher. <laughs> there you go, and, and probably so, harder then. Yes, yes, yeah. But yes, I'm thinking in particular of batting and being like. No way was that a strike. Turning around to argue with the ump, it's my dad being like, oh, I just like for the, the actual game, he was your coach and ump. <laughs> uh, he wouldn't coach and ump at the same time, but I'm thinking like different years. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Sometimes he was coach, but if they didn't need a coach, then then he would. Uh, man, man, he would of, ump man the next of year. many talents. He 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 likes sports. Um, That's awesome, and uh, he's good at him. But but yeah, we we would always complain that that he wasn't giving us enough favor. He was giving us like a reverse favoritism. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just, (laughs) it seems kind of like you have to pick a side (laughs) and that that was an effective, it's, it's not in his, his temperament. I don't think to like, to get overly frustrated with us because we weren't um, Mm -hmm. like, like to have that competitive drive that you're talking about. Right. Like, he doesn't really have that kind of personality, but I do think that he was very aware that he could start playing favorites or would or really didn't want to be seen as playing favorites, so he would sort of err on the other side. Right. Uh, I I think I would do that if I was coaching my kids um, in any kind of sports league. Um, I think I could. I would probably want to, just knowing myself. Like, I would hate it if someone else was in charge <laughs> and, yeah. and i thought that they were they were doing a bad job or whatever right. i'd be like no put me in coach to be the coach to be the co- <laughs> put um, me in coach so and i have i have such a strong sense of responsibility that mm-hmm. i know that they would need volunteers for whatever and i wouldn't be able to say no to it um so i probably would end up coaching uh and then i do have a strong competitive streak and so yeah i would probably end up basically doing what my dad did (laughs) nice Um, yeah my dad was also a a coach for me um up to a certain age um it's always like that fine line of man once you get to a certain age does it become a conflict of interest you know right same way of like i'm sure a good church analogy would Mm. be wouldn't it be weird if you were the pastor of the church where your parents went to church you know, um, or you think you could do it? I think I could do it. I, I thought it would be weird at first, but right. at this point, it's like whatever. I've <laughs> <laughs> no, because because uh, I used to be much more. I'm going to sound like really callous here. But, yeah. Um, but I used to be much more concerned about what people thought of me, and it would make me very nervous when I went out to preach or to speak publicly mm. if I knew somebody was there and I really respected their opinion or something like that didn't want to disappoint or didn't want to offend or you know any any variation on that theme um but after even just two years at this parish of kind of navigating those waters uh Mm -hmm. of of like being in front of people i really respected and then just messing up or feeling like i did of preparing well but then not delivering something of being relatively unprepared and yeah. doing better than I thought. Just all of those situations have kind of like just deadened me a little bit to mm-hmm. to too much concern about what other people think. And yeah. so I'm not saying I'm a I'm immune to it. Right. But like the parents of my friends <laughs> are in the congregation sometimes. Yeah. And former professors that I've had uh, who I looked up to a lot, um, just 
in general, other people where where I'll notice that they're there, and it, it doesn't really phase me anymore like it used to. So I think that would be the case also with my parents um, yeah. that I wouldn't, you know, that's cool. Wouldn't feel weird about it. I like these impromptu questions. Okay, yeah. so remember the person last time who asked about the Latin and Roman, right? They had a second part of the question, which was also, "What's your favorite image of Mary, the Mother of God?" Mm. I love that question. Um, and thanks for doing this. Thank you, whoever you are, anonymous. We appreciate <laughs> both of your questions greatly. Um, what was the first question? I got the image one. Remember they they had asked last time about the Latin right or Roman right? Like, is oh it yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> um, so there's this image. I don't know which one it's called. I, I've heard it referred to as Madonna of the Streets. Oh. It's kind of like this image of Mary holding the infant Jesus close, kind of like protecting him, sheltering him. Um, I love that image. Um, there's really so many for me. I really like Chestahova, the image uh, of Our Lady of Chestahova. Mm, yeah. Um, also referred to sometimes as the Black Madonna. Yeah. Um, because it was in a fire that caused um, great like kind of searing of it, but it did not destroy it at all. And um, I know, I know we argue about this sometimes we'll do it at another point, but like, I like the, I like the background stuff scientifically of, of the Tilma and our lady of Guadalupe. (laughs) Um, And then statue wise, I mean, the Pieta, like, I, I don't know how you can go to Rome and not be moved by that image. but So there's really so many. Yeah. I mean, everyone, but I don't know. Any jump out? For- well, for me, not everyone. <laughs> Actually, if, you've ever, if you ever get the chance to go to Israel and you go to Nazareth, uh, mm. the upper basilica <clears throat> at Nazareth over the house of the Holy Family. Okay. Now, um, is this like a disputed house of the Holy Family? Like, no, no, no. This is, this this is, is the house. Because there's some... Th- this things is that are like multiple, like, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, but yeah. this was the no, house. No, but this is... this. Where they say Jesus grew up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's there's not really a dispute. Uh, like there are, like, I mean, this would lead us astray, but like some of the locations of the stations of the cross that you make in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. we know are not exactly where it would have been. And we know the historical reason why it's here. It's right. because when Jerusalem was under Muslim control, the Christians were not allowed to into certain areas of the city. And so like it develops sort of along the outer rim of that. So anyway, that's probably just destroyed a lot of people's faith who have gone there and made (laughs) that way of the cross. But, um, the, those places shelter the memory. That's the, that's the the key term, the operative term, but in Nazareth. So there's the, the grotto of the, the house of the Holy family, which I don't know of any alternative locations. Mm -hmm. Um, Ooh, okay. Sorry. Another alternative thing, which I think is is even less controversial in Jerusalem, is the alternative Holy Sepulchre. Have you ever heard of this? No. So, a uh, brief history of it is that, um, and I might not be doing everyone the justice they deserve in this, but basically, the, the place of the Holy Sepulchre has been preserved from the beginning, um, even when Christianity was illegal. Uh, it was preserved by tradition, and then with Christianity becoming legal, uh, Constantine and his mother Helen interviewed the people, and they found like that they had preserved the tradition on this spot that some of the Roman emperors had even like paved over so that people would stop worshiping there mm. of the, the this place of the empty tomb. Um, and so Constantine built a church, and that church has gone through significant renovations. Um, and orientations and stuff, but the location has stayed the same. And so, like, there's really just academically, from a tradition perspective, from all perspectives, there's no doubt about the Holy Sepulcher being the place of the empty tomb of Jesus. Mm-hmm. But some people came in uh, from a Protestant perspective, very biblically oriented, and they were like, this doesn't look like it's like what the scriptures say. And in fact, the scriptures say he was crucified and buried outside the walls of the city, but this is inside the walls. They didn't realize at that point that the current walls of the city are crusader era, um, 
which is medieval era, and that the earlier walls of the city were much smaller, and so wow. Holy Sepulchre was outside the walls. So they found this other place. It was supposed to be called the Place of the Skull, and they found this rock cliff that kind of looks like a skull. Mm-hmm. Um, it's right over the bus station outside Damascus Gate, if you're familiar with Jerusalem. Um, and <laughs> Which is no one on this <laughs> anyway, podcast, but, but go ahead. Um, and... Uh, it's called the Garden Tomb, and it's a place where you can go visit. It's kind of near the Ecole Biblique and some other stuff in that in that area outside the the old city walls. Um, but it's a really beautiful, peaceful place to go. But it's a huge uh, Mormon and Protestant pilgrimage place because they'll go there, and I don't know what they're told about the history. Like that's definitely not the place. It's an Iron Age tomb, which is from the seventh century BC. Like it's way too early. Right. Um, and Jesus was laid in a fresh rock cut tomb and just the whole tradition of the Holy Sepulchre, like our archaeolo- people visit it. People, a lot of people visit it. And I think even when they're told that this is not the place, um, they'll say, yeah, but it's way more peaceful and I like it, uh, because it seems like it should be the place. And then they go to the Holy Sepulchre and it's like dark and there's the smell of incense and all these candles and all these different sort of like Christian groups that have control of different parts of the Holy Sepulchre and it's just chaos when you go in there and it's off-putting to a lot of people. Wow. So even if they're told that this is the real location and this other one isn't, they'll still be like, yeah, but I'll probably go back and pray at the other one because it's more peaceful. Um, so that's all to say, bringing it back, Nazareth is not like that, the house of the Holy Family. There's no alternate location that I'm aware of. Got and it. on that, that's all to say that on top of There's an image <laughs> of the lower, uh, so the lower basilica has the grotto um, with the house of the Holy Family. The upper basilica built on top of it has these images of Our Lady um, just like sent from every country and made into mosaics. And so they're like, You've got, you know, like Our Lady of Guadalupe representing Mexico. Um, and it'll it'll say like where this and the Our Lady from the Philippines and Our Lady from Japan and like these different sort of uh, images of Our Lady which are dear to the people of that place. And it's a really yeah. beautiful idea. The <clears throat> ones that the United States sent in are ugly <laughs> like they are just horrible looking and it's not only us but it's kind of like come on can't we represent a little bit better <laughs> than this like this like sort of weird modern modern art take right like cubist mary and stuff like um i just i remember being like there are so many beautiful images of our lady and uh, there are some others as well so right that's all to, to answer the to say. Oh, it's it's like it's like in, in. it's like Inception. <laughs> We're coming out of the different layers yes, of consciousness yes, yes. right now. Um, my, I, I have many favorite images. I really like Our Lady of Lords. I've been to Lords, mm. and that place meant a lot to me. And that's a common image you see. Uh, I wear the the medal, um, the the miraculous, miraculous medal from Rue de Bac, and and just. I like all of that French stuff quite a lot. Yeah, I, me too. Um, but my absolute favorite image is what I have on the little card that I made when I was ordained a priest to hand out to people. Uh, kind of like a holy card, but it's not for a saint. It's an ordination card. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's from this little chapel in Genoa. Uh, and I contacted the sisters to see if I could use it. It's called... Um, Ready. It's called uh, La Madonna. Uh, it's called Regina Apostolorum. So, like Queen of the Apostles. Mm. It's Our Lady Queen of the Apostles. And uh, maybe we can put a link to it in our show notes because we have show notes. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Um, so that y'all can see it because it's not a common one. But I, it's it's been my phone background for what that's worth for for quite a while. Once yeah. I figured out how to make phone backgrounds. Um, last year (laughs) awesome during the pandemic something i learned and um i love this image mary is pointing to jesus jesus is preoccupied with a flower baby jesus um she's got this little 
book open. It's the scriptures and it says, Eche on you stay, behold the Lamb of God. It's just, she, she's got kind of a star on her cloaks, a queen of heaven kind of thing, the revelation image. But it's just a really beautiful image. So Our Lady Queen of the Apostles, it might be hard to search for on Google. Um, Because right. it's like, La Madonna de la Pora, that's the P-O-R-A is the acronym for the religious order. And it's just a very small religious order um, of these very nice sisters who who really enjoyed telling me about that image. And the name of it is Madonna Regina Apostolorum in Latin, Queen of the Apostles. And uh, so we'll, we'll put a link up there on the show notes um, so that everybody who's listening or watching um, can see it uh, because it's just, yeah, that one means a lot to me. That was yeah. a long, long answer. Wasn't there, no, there wasn't a second part to that question. No. I've gotten confused. But on, I have a second part to the twice. question yes. that I think to just follow it up is, what is your favorite then crucifix to pray in front of? And I'll just go easy, hands down, San Damiano yeah, cross. Yeah, I knew you were like, going to say that. I, I mean, I just, but there's a lot no, of cool great. things. Like there's all these little nuances in the, like that are depicted on the crucifix that uh, it's, it would go into a whole episode, but there's like literally entire booklet on it of like, here's where this thing is an apostle and this, anyway, I, we, we had that one in the Rome chapel at the Due Santi campus for university of Dallas. uh, When I did my semester abroad with them in 2008 in the spring before I was a seminarian, um, I spent a lot of time in that chapel. That was a really formative time for my vocation and my faith. And I was sort of a year into practicing my faith at that point. And I was in that chapel quite a lot. And they, that cross was right up next to the tabernacle, prominently uh, placed, uh, the San Damiano cross. And we went to Assisi that semester and, mm. you know, got to go see it. Yeah, <laughs> And so that one does does mean a lot to me but not to just be lame and give the same answer as you um there's another cross that i like a lot which is much less well known it's from this monastery called le baru in the provence Mm. region of france it's very close to avignon Mm -hmm. you kind of you go to marseille and then you take a train or a rent a car or something to get up there and it's this benedictine monastery that i love i've been there several times um to make retreats and they have this cross um in kind of this medieval French style. Uh, first of all, the, the monastery is named after Mary Magdalene. Like there's this huge devotion to Mary Magdalene in that area. Because mm-hmm. by tradition, like sort of the love of Christ and the desire to spread the gospel and just being consumed with that same love that like from Easter morning when she was looking for his body and like weeping because she couldn't find it. That same sort of love but now transforms by by the descent of the Holy spirit mm-hmm. um, just like drove her out um, by tradition to the South of France, where she lived out as kind of an, an anchorite like a, or an anchoress or whatever the term, just like a hermit mm-hmm. um, with just like consumed by that love of Christ. Um, and so there's a, a great devotion to her in that region of kind of South of France and the monster is named after her. Um, but over the, the altar, they have suspended this really big crucifix and it's in this like early medieval style of Christ, the King with a pierced side. Mm. And so he's got this, like, I mean, imagine like a Charlemagne crown or something Mm -hmm. like, like medieval French looking thing. Um, he's got this, this crown on and he's wearing it, it's a very simple looking crucifix, so it's not terribly ornate, but he's he's wearing like these royal colors, but then his side is pierced and he's crucified. Hmm. And there's something about like the the exaltation of the cross there and But he's not resurrected. No, it's not a resurrect okay. suffix. Um Resurrect. Yeah, whatever <laughs> it is. Um and just like I don't know. Christ the King is never, especially some of the images of like Christ the King of the universe that I've seen with this kind of newer title to that feast mm-hmm. day to just, you know, encompass everything. Christ King over all the multiverse, multiverses. Um, 
I some of those images can kind of I don't know kind of seem strange to me or or I never really got into it but f- like this one connected with that monastery in that place and just the it's like Christ the the king in poverty I don't in simplicity mm. like uh there's there's a lot there and so I I bought an image of the crucifix from that monastery and brought it back with me and it's in my office um nice yeah I like so, it there you go yeah, we just we effectively did a whole episode on <laughs> the image of Mary that we <laughs> spun off into <laughs> layers and layers <laughs> and layers of unnecessary backstory about <laughs> like Jerusalem. The Holy Sepulchre. <laughs> all of that. I just love it. Just threw the whole Franciscan way of the cross in Jerusalem under but the But you bus. don't ever want to be a tour guide, <clears throat> right? Uh, of like you would oh, never for like want a parish? to like, well parish group or something yeah i've been a tour guide before right but it's it's not your like you don't particularly love that like no i i really like the you know go around explain things uh share this love of the place and with a smaller connection probably yeah that kind of thing but everything to do with organizing and corralling a tour group is just i yeah that that's not my jam um, yeah. So, yeah, I I love being there and I love explaining it to people. Yeah. But I don't think that really like leading that kind of thing is 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 my. Nikki and I always talk about yeah. one day of like when the kids are grown, you know, and whenever one kid gets old enough, it seems like we have another one. So <laughs> I don't know what day that will be, but when all the kids can be left and there's not overwhelmingness to a- any big burden on someone. Uh, taking like you and father Edwin with us to somewhere like the Holy land or some of these Holy sites and being like, that would be awesome because you guys get the privilege of saying some of those masses and getting into right. some elite. You gotta, you gotta pull the clericalism card there to get to the it next helps. level. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And then somebody who actually knows, like I'd probably be walking there and be like, yeah, what's this, what's this spot on the side? Yeah. I guess this is where Jesus was laid to rest. Right. You <laughs> know? Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll plan it. We'll, right. we'll do it. We'll do Very it. Good. We'll do it. All right. Hey, Ooh. I like it. That was fun. It was fun. Yeah. We'll good send stuff. We'll send some links in the show notes. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of Joey's can't tell father, Paul Vector. Take care. God bless. <laughs>